BetterHelp is meant to be, as the name suggests, a better way to get help. Maybe you have anxiety or depression and need someone to talk to, but therapists near you aren't taking new clients, they're booking months in advance, they don't accept your insurance, or they just don't align with your values. Finding someone that suits your goals and needs is difficult, but crucial. This is what BetterHelp has promised, but according to the Wall Street Journal, it's been a failed promise. Back in December, Caleb Hill went to BetterHelp for the same reasons we already listed. He felt isolated as a gay man growing up in a conservative household in Tennessee. After being kicked out of his home and hearing about BetterHelp in podcast commercials, Caleb decided to seek help. He requested an LGBTQ therapist, which BetterHelp should be able to provide, right? They promised a personalized therapist tailored to his needs. So even if Caleb's therapist wasn't gay themselves, finding someone that understands and can help LGBTQ individuals shouldn't be too hard. Apparently though, it was. Imagine being in Caleb's shoes for just a moment here. Your family says your sexuality is a sin, they've kicked you out of the house, and you live in a state that, generally speaking, doesn't support your existence. Then you do the right thing and seek help for your mental well being, only to be asked, Have you tried not being gay? That's what Caleb alleges his therapist told him. Quote, he said, If I chose to go back to who I was and deny those feelings, aka being gay, he could get me where I needed to be. I don't think I need to extrapolate too much here to really show how messed up it is to tell anyone to just deny their feelings and deny who they are. Like, I'm sorry, but how does that contribute to mental health at all? The whole reason Caleb likely came out and one of the reasons many people come out is because it isn't good to keep those feelings bottled up inside and they recognize that. Secondly, the therapist comments state that being gay is a choice, that you can just go back and that's total garbage. That's not how sexuality works. The therapist may have meant that Caleb should go back to being in denial or being in the closet again, which again, is just not good for your mental health. So what a great therapist, right? Put yourself at greater risk for depression and anxiety if you want help. It's infuriating, honestly. And Caleb's family may never accept him for who he is, and that's their problem. As he explains, he needed someone to give him that acceptance, to tell him it's okay to be gay. And instead he got the opposite, a therapist that told him to sacrifice being gay if he wanted his family back. Telling someone to just stop being gay also has some massive conversion therapy vibes. Now, that's not to say that this therapist told Caleb to do this. I don't know what exactly they said, and BetterHelp obviously wouldn't discuss it because it breaks patient-client confidentiality. Still, the accusations also feel hypocritical when we take into account what BetterHelp as a company says about conversion therapy. On their website, they state that, quote, if you are a loved one of someone who is LGBTQIA+, your acceptance and support may be imperative for your loved one's mental health. They also explain that conversion therapy is dangerous with no scientific credibility, which is true by the way, and that there can be negative impacts to telling an LGBT person that they need to be repaired or fixed when in actuality, they aren't broken in the first place. I agree with BetterHelp's stance in this article, like 100%. So the question here is why the fuck don't their own therapists feel that way? How come the company is over here preaching acceptance, but if you log on and ask for help, you'll allegedly be told to change and go back in the closet? Few things get under my skin more than a business that says all the right things, but then acts sneaky and does shady stuff behind closed doors. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're going to be an asshole, at least be an honest asshole. Don't hire therapists that actively use mentally harmful practices. Is that not like a bare minimum anymore? Otherwise, BetterHelp should call themselves help that might improve or worsen depending on who you get. I know that's a long ass name, but my point has been made, I think. While this is BetterHelp's most recent controversy, there are several more to be had, and some which are so upsetting that they have people questioning the benefit to virtual therapy as a whole. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we're chatting about BetterHelp. Now, there have been a lot of accusations floating around since around 2018, and I wanted to dig into it a bit and see what we could learn about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this website. Let me make one thing clear before we start though. If you've benefited from online therapy, this episode is in no way meant to discredit your experience. I think online therapy can be a great tool, 
And if you've specifically found help through BetterHelp and that is the tool for you, then more power to you. Getting help is important and we all have to do what's right for us. And I'm in that boat too. I currently see a therapist through telehealth right now and it's not through BetterHelp or anything, but um, I do that right now. And it's been very beneficial in my life to talk to someone regularly, especially when we're covering so much dark content all the time. But with that being said, I also believe it's on BetterHelp to give their customers, well, you know, the best help possible. And if it wasn't clear enough from the intro of this episode, I don't really think they've done that. Now let's rewind the clock just a little bit back to 2018. One of BetterHelp's biggest partnerships was with Philip DeFranco. They sponsored his Rogue Rocket channel and the relationship between the two seemed incredibly solid. Phil claimed to use the service regularly, he appreciated their mission, and he's been a consistent advocate for mental health in general. BetterHelp was a winner here too. As the company founder, Alan Mattis put it, Phil represented an in to the world that they didn't have. And what a better way to enter the YouTube space. Philip DeFranco is a really respected and reliable creator. And so naturally, BetterHelp looked respectable and reliable to a wide audience. Things were going so well, in fact, that Phil and Rogue Rocket recommended other channels to collaborate with them. And before you knew it, Boogie2988 and Shane Dawson were also telling their audiences about BetterHelp services. This isn't to say that BetterHelp was unpopular or unknown before Phil came along, but this is kind of where they really blew up and became a massive sponsor in the internet YouTube realm. And it wasn't long until people took note of it. YouTuber Memology101 criticized Phil for profiting off mental illness and quote, promoting a scam app. Soon, the criticism started to snowball until accusations were flying everywhere. Plenty of popular creators at that time spoke about their own struggles with depression, so it seemed natural that their audience would trust them with a topic as serious as mental health. If they can get help, so can you, right? But headlines were reading, YouTube stars are being accused of profiting off fans' depression told a different side of the story. And to be clear, I don't think recommending a therapy app is inherently horrible. Spreading mental health awareness and normalizing therapy is really important. And on the other hand, it's very difficult to actually promote something like this too, because so much is on the line. This isn't a phone case or merch, it's mental health. Once people began digging into BetterHelp's terms of service, things only looked worse. Back then it read, quote, we do not control the quality of the counselor services and we do not determine whether any counselor is qualified to provide any specific service as well as whether a counselor is categorized correctly or matched correctly to you. This is understandably probably the last thing you actually want to hear from a mental health service. People questioned how much BetterHelp actually cared about the service they provided when they couldn't even ensure basic quality. And again, this might be a bit different had they just been literally anything else, but BetterHelp is a mental health company and health products are one of the things you really don't wanna mess around with. Psychologists weighed in to provide their own viewpoint, emphasizing the importance of the stakes involved, nuanced issues, and the importance of ethics in this industry. Dr. Allison wrote a blog post that she was deeply concerned about the BetterHelp platform, its practices, and their terms and conditions. She said that plain and simple, it is not what YouTubers and their advertisers promise. It doesn't offer the mental health treatment it portrays. And at that time, if BetterHelp called themselves an e-counseling platform or downplayed their professionalism, then this controversy likely wouldn't have blown up the way that it did. However, their commercials and partnerships went on and on about this real invaluable treatment when BetterHelp didn't actually have the fine print to back it up. People were pissed and in their anger, they labeled BetterHelp a scam. Personally, I don't think they're a scam because of this. It's not as if they didn't help people. It's not as if they were downright lying about their service. It's more of a gray area than that. In later years, even after Phil dropped them as a sponsor, he said that he'd never considered them scammers. Their terms of service made him wary, plain and simple. And there didn't seem to be hard feelings whatsoever. He, as well as some of their other partnerships, decided YouTube and ads for mental health services just weren't ready to mix. But it's the founder, Alan Mattis, that had an interesting response to this whole ordeal. Obviously, I'd expect him to defend himself but he unequivocally denied some of the accusations and called it drama purely for entertainment purposes. Like, I'm not going to say that any unfounded accusations were deserved, but he seems very hesitant to take on any responsibility in his Medium article. Overall, the portion of his article that admits, yes, they shouldn't have gone with standard legalese on their terms and conditions feels dismissive. Instead, Allen focuses much more on how wrong and far from the truth these concerned customers were. And frankly, it's a bad look and here's why. Were there people jumping the gun and saying BetterHelp was a scam? Yeah, absolutely. But there were also people like Phil that said that even if they liked the service, they just couldn't support the business anymore. Personally, I think BetterHelp should have focused more on assuring these customers and explaining their hiring practices as opposed to criticizing how the internet works. 
consumers have been begging people for more transparency and more accountability for ages now, and BetterHelp had the opportunity to give it. They had every opportunity, honestly. Allen was so offended by the way the internet talked about his company that his article really didn't do that, at least not in my opinion. There's also one really important thing he said that I want to stress. Allen said, and I quote, "'One of the favorite conspiracy theories was that our business model is selling data to third parties. This is such a far-fetched conspiracy that I feel awkward addressing it." He follows up by saying that would be a gross violation of federal laws, outright denying that it never happened. Just another idea cooked up by the internet. But unfortunately, it wasn't. And just a small trigger warning for the next section, um, we will be mentioning patients experiencing suicidal thoughts here. So if you're not in the headspace to hear about that, then just go ahead and skip this section. Now, once the pandemic hit, more and more people began turning to online therapy, BetterHelp included. Naturally, as these services exploded, so did the questions. How were they protecting their clients? How do they treat their therapists? And the answer to these questions, unfortunately, were not great. Jezebel conducted an investigation into the quote, spooky, loosely regulated world of online therapy and found that Allen was allegedly bullshitting the public two years prior when he said BetterHelp wasn't selling their data to third parties. According to Jezebel's findings, Facebook is alerted every time someone opens the BetterHelp app, thereby knowing when appointments are booked. They even confirmed this information by downloading personal data from Facebook and identifying BetterHelp records. But it gets creepier. Metadata from every message to a therapist, though not its contents, are also sent to Facebook. Quote, Facebook knew what time of day we were going to therapy, our approximate location, and how long we were chatting on the app. When we asked about this directly, BetterHelp declined to elaborate on why a social media company needed to know quite so much about when and how we were asking for help. One research and analytics firm, Mixpanel, got even more information. Each patient using BetterHelp was assigned a random number. Then answers to therapy intakes were attached to said number and forwarded to Mixpanel, meaning they knew where a patient was, what device they used, and about how old they were, if they were spiritual or religious, financial status, sexual orientation, how long they've been in therapy, and even when they last plan to take their own lives. And let that sink in for just a moment here. The founder of BetterHelp promised in 2018 that they never sold their information, but Mixpanel knew about the patient's deepest, darkest struggles. This is gross, invasive, and it makes me so incredibly uncomfortable that I'm almost beyond words. It's not as if we can just say, oh, HIPAA doesn't allow this either. HIPAA was developed for anonymizing paperwork transferred between doctors. As Jezebel put it, it's been less useful in determining how medical privacy works in a paperless world. The company says they abide by HIPAA, by the way, and they very well might, given how long ago it was written. But in my opinion, HIPAA needs some updating too. Every time you open the BetterHelp app, you should be asked, hey, are you cool with your data being sent to Facebook right now? This transfer of information needs to be transparent and easily refused. It's not good enough for BetterHelp, or any company for that matter, to be able to sneak questionable language into their terms of service. Obviously, BetterHelp isn't alone in this. Facebook has been using personal information in shady ways for years now. It's practically one of the things they're most well known for, other than a place that your great aunt likes to post her racist rants. It feels extra scummy that a platform who says their entire purpose is to help your mental health would be responsible for sharing that information. But honestly, why would I be surprised anymore? There is a second part to this after all, and that's how they treat their therapists. When BetterHelp partnered with Travis Scott in 2021, which believe me, we will get to that in a moment, Jacobin Magazine also wrote a lengthy article about BetterHelp's exploitative nature. See, their therapists have seemed unsympathetic or uncaring in the past. One user said that after texting her therapist how she felt suicidal, the therapist only sent back the word, oh. And what a great response to that, right? Like, I'm confident that a stranger would have more sympathy than that. Like, they just have to be able to have that, especially a therapist, but apparently just, oh, was enough. However, even though the public may be quick to jump down this therapist's throat and say it's gross behavior, it's really the platform to blame here. Apparently, one of the reasons that this therapist may have sent such a lackluster response is that there's a word limit imposed upon them. Jacobin writes, quote, if a counselor goes over the maximum count, the app can stop paying them. I feel like I'm about to say this a lot, but again, pause and let that sink in for a moment. If you text your therapist asking for help, they might only be able to text you back a few words because then they'll stop getting paid if they say more. How fucked up is that? I assume this is because BetterHelp wants their therapist to book sessions since that's what clients really pay for and where the money comes in. Though 
I obviously cannot confirm their intentions for certain. Others have also accused the app of paying therapists just 20 to $30 an hour, whereas industry standard is more like $100 an hour. Besides, while having total access to a counselor through text might sound nice, a therapist in your pocket, so to speak, it really doesn't help for independence or a therapist's own mental well-being. Like seriously, imagine going about your day and getting countless text messages from your clients telling you that they need you, that they're in a dark place or whatever the case might be. Therapists are people too, and they deserve to take a step away from work. BetterHelp doesn't offer them above industry standard for such a high standard of work. It's pretty much just expected that they're always going to be available. BetterHelp has countered these arguments though, claiming that 90% of their therapists earn more than $30 an hour. But other therapists online have claimed that even 10% making less is still abysmal. Overall, I'd say the reviews of both employees and the clients have been really mixed. On Indeed, one therapist says that even if you have flexible from home hours, it's a very heavy workload for little pay. Some say it's just not worth it, implying that the company is profiting from a saturated new amount of therapists while paying them less than a fair wage. The biggest pro that I see is the flexibility, while everything else seems lackluster at best. The same is true on Glassdoor as well, where only 43% of therapists would recommend the service to a friend or approve of the CEO. As for the customers, BetterHelp posts reviews about how down to earth, knowledgeable, and helpful their therapists have been. Truthfully, whether on their website or elsewhere, many customers have had fantastic experiences. Not all of them, clearly Caleb, as we discussed earlier, didn't, but I'm glad that they have helped so many people. It's just unfortunate that this seems to come at the expense of their privacy and the therapist's well being. But while these are some of the bigger issues and probably the things most inherently wrong with the company, they've had other controversies too. You know, like partnering with Travis Scott. And before we go on to discuss their questionable partnerships and lesser controversies, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor. Remember those New Year's goals you promised yourself you'd stick to? Well, HelloFresh is here to help you eat better by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door, taking the hassle out of dinner time. HelloFresh now has over 40 weekly recipes to choose from, so you can say bye bye to your recipe rut and start treating yourself and your family to exciting new flavors every single week. It doesn't matter your lifestyle or meal preferences. HelloFresh has recipes that are sure to please everyone at the table. From fit and wholesome to veggie or family friendly, you'll always find something that even the pickiest eaters will enjoy. And with fast and fresh recipes, HelloFresh's latest line of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. You can enjoy the taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls, which are amazing by the way, or Southwest pork and bean burritos. So if you're ready to get cooking, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash casket 65 and use code casket 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash casket 65 and use code casket 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Eight people died and many more were injured at Astroworld. Lawsuits and legal responsibilities are still in the works or up in the air, but there's still a lot of justified fury at Travis Scott for this tragedy. There just wasn't enough security telling people to like, you know, push, like push move back. back. Cause we were literally just like up against the rails and could like barely breathe. And then he finally stopped the show because he noticed someone passed out and he starts singing. Like he says, stop the show, but he's still singing while this person is passed out on the ground. And everyone around me was like, what the hell is going on? He allegedly heard people saying that things were out of control and that crowd surge was too intense, but he did nothing. He's egged on crowds before, and he seemed to completely neglect his fans' well being and even continued singing while someone was passed out. Then his hilariously pathetic response where he says, I'm devastated while rubbing his forehead and not even making eye contact with the camera, like, yeah. Like to say people are angry at him for that would be an understatement. I'm not sure if he'll live this one down or not. And frankly, I'm not sure that he should. But then here comes the strange corporate insertion. Travis Scott partnered with Better Health to offer a month of free counseling to those affected. Like what? If Better Health wanted to offer counseling on their own, then they could have gone for it. But offering free counseling for those affected by tragedies is a reasonable response initially, but why partner with someone who may be responsible for the tragedy is really the question here. Like, did you see BetterHelp partnering with the couple who caused a shit ton of California wildfires because of their baby gender reveal party? No, because that would be fucking ridiculous. So the question here is why should Travis Scott be any different? 
is because he's a celebrity? And if not that, then why? And as Jacobin also pointed out, typically partnerships involve paying a celebrity so that BetterHelp can have access to their audience. Even though BetterHelp said they were not paying Travis Scott anything for the partnership, it's not hard to see why people would think that. For one, BetterHelp has been perfectly fine lying to the public before when it comes to third parties seeing data. Though I'll tack on allegedly to that because the founder made those comments in 2018 and it was uncovered that Facebook had access in 2020. So maybe he was telling the truth in 2018, but then changed his mind later, or like maybe the company decided to go a different direction. Personally, I don't know. That's up to you to, you know, make your own conclusion on that. But secondly, if BetterHelp wasn't paying Travis Scott for access to his audience as they seem to do with Ariana Grande and other high profile people, then what the hell is the point of working with him? If Travis Scott wanted to pay for people's therapy, he could have just announced that anyone who attended the concert could send their medical and therapy bills to his team or something. That way, fans who already had a therapist could continue seeing them or find a new therapist for their own terms instead of feeling obligated to go to a platform that they may or may not be comfortable with because it's free. After all, that's what Travis did with the literal funerals of the people who died. He told the families that he would pay for any funeral costs. Can you imagine how disgusting it would look if he partnered up with like a fucking funeral home saying, oh, if you go here, I'll pay for a free casket for those that died at my concert. Like that's absolutely horrific. And to an extent, I feel like that's exactly what Travis Scott and BetterHelp did, but just with mental health. And while some would argue that Travis Scott is far more the responsible party here, I feel that BetterHelp enabled this ridiculous PR stunt by accepting his money in the first place. Not to mention, given just how many issues BetterHelp has, it shows that Travis Scott doesn't seem to care about getting his fans the best, most reputable help either. In my opinion, this is what it looks like. BetterHelp looks helpful, caring, and compassionate, while Travis Scott looks like he wants the best for his fans. And I'm just not convinced that either of those things are true, especially between these two, you know, one individual and one company. The thing is, I don't necessarily believe that partnering with a therapy app in of itself is inherently harmful. If a celebrity or influencer genuinely feels like online therapy has helped them and wants to give their followers a code to make it more affordable, you do you. However, BetterHelp specifically is not the one I'd feel comfortable promoting given how much data they share. Plus again, it's worth remembering that this is stuff shared from an intake form. So even before you start a subscription, BetterHelp has a lot of personal information to throw around. To this day, we've got plenty of Reddit threads and forum posts that criticize YouTubers for taking BetterHelp sponsorships. And while I do feel that we shouldn't promote this specific therapy platform, it's also on BetterHelp to, as overused as this phrase may be, to do better. They really do have the chance to help thousands of people who sign up for their service, and I'm sure they have helped many folks. But until their therapists are properly paid and the company's practices are transparent and ethical, like not telling someone to just stop being gay, I can't really support them and I don't want the help that they're offering. But with all of that being said, these are just my opinions, my thoughts, and the end of today's episode. So thank you so much for joining me all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. It helps the algorithm out a lot as you watch through these episodes or just listening. Listening is also very groovy too. If you'd like to connect with me outside of these platforms, make sure to click on my Linktree link in the description box. It's going to have a list for all of my social media and current projects that I'm involved in. I wanna thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me today. I hope you've learned something new and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.